Hello friends, I'm Dr. Harvinder Singh and I'm very excited to welcome you to my 25th video podcast for today. I have decided to post short video podcasts from now on and I'm very hopeful that this podcast will be between 10 or 12 minutes. So topic for today is drug interaction for clozapine. And as I mentioned yesterday, if you have not done already, do join our email newsletter and stay updated of latest video podcast and clinically relevant posts on our website and our course. So without wasting any time, Let's begin our podcast for today. So topic for today is drug interactions for this medication called clozapine. And this podcast is available in three resources. This is available on our website, Psychiatry Education Forum. This is available in our course, Physician's Guide for Clinical Psychiatry, and available on our YouTube channel. If you have not done already, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. So before we begin this podcast, you all know that I posted this question on our website, Psychiatry Education Forum. I will very quickly read this for you. So this is a clinical case, a 40-year-old patient, history of schizophrenia, is stable on clozapine 350 mg daily dose for 3 years. But now, he is admitted to hospital for recent worsening of confusion and disorientation. When you did the lab work, did the clozapine level, you found that he is having clozapine toxicity. Which of the following interaction have the high likelihood of causing clozapine toxicity? That means increased clozapine level to a toxic range. So four options are, did this patient had recent increase in cigarette smoking? Second, did this patient had recent increase in caffeine intake? Third option is, did somebody added omeprazole or fourth option is did someone added St. Jones wort or herbal medication so this video podcast will answer this question so before I begin this I also want to say that I published on this topic during my psychiatry residency this literature review was published in Journal of Psychiatric Intensive Care. I was the first author in this article. And I will also point my findings while talking about this topic today. So let's begin with interactions for clozapine. So first we will begin with antidepressants. Do you think clozapine have any interactions with any antidepressants? Let's see. So first, and I think the most number of cases that I found in literature was for fluvoxamine. I found 15 case reports of fluvoxamine and clozapine. And the it increases clozapine level through inhibition of 1A2 and 3A4 cytochrome P450. So this combination should be avoided with clozapine and fluvoxamine. And the other cases or likely contributor for high clozapine levels are peroxetine that can also do that through 2D6 inhibition and sertraline. I found actually 10 uh, cases for sertraline and 11 cases for peroxetine. I also found two case reports for fluoxetine uh, and found no cases for SNRIs, 
tricyclic antidepressants or even monoamine oxidase inhibitors. So for antidepressants, fluvoxamine, peroxetine and sertraline should be avoided if possible. Now second section is interactions with mood stabilizers. And in mood stabilizers, I found few case reports, but for Welproid, Depakote, I found mixed reports. Some cases were showing increase in clozapine levels and some were showing reduction in clozapine level. And this is because of uh, two possible mechanism of action. First is through 1A2 inhibition and the second mechanism is through protein binding displacement. So with Valproate, you should be cautious that it can do either or or. And the other cases I found was for carbamazepine. I found two case reports on this. We all know that carbamazepine is a pan-inducer of most of the cytochrome P450 enzymes. Thereby, it will cause not increase but reduction in clozapine levels. And uh, I have not mentioned here, but I just want to say I also found two case reports for lemotrigine and clozapine interactions. And those case reports said that likely mechanism of action is through UGT1A4, but the data was not very strong or convincing, so I have not mentioned this here. And also found two case reports for phenytoin. But I will focus more on Welproid and carbamazepine as a caution when you prescribe clozapine. Now, the third class is antipsychotics. In antipsychotic, I was not able to find much data except for these. I will say most cases I found were for aripiprazole. Six case reports, that's a good number. But we don't know the exact mechanism, how this does decreases actually clozapine level, not increase but decreases clozapine level. I found one case report each for risperidone and this other antipsychotic called levomipromazine. And the mechanism for both these antipsychotics were 2D6 inhibition. But the data was not convincing, so I have not mentioned or included them in the table. I will say stay cautious with aripiprazole. Closely monitor for clozapine levels if you prescribe this medication. Now the fourth class, which I think is the most important class, is antibiotics. Actually, most cases that I found were in a patient with infection. Infection is the most, most, most common cause of clozapine toxicity. Whether it's antibiotics or infection, we don't know exactly, but this is the most common cause. And which antibiotics are more common? Well, two antibiotics. First is ciprofloxacin, which by inhibition of 1A2 and 3A4 will cause clozapine toxicity. And second is erythromycin, which will cause 3A4 inhibition and increase clozapine level. And actually, I found four case reports for ciprofloxacin at that point when I published it, and two case reports for erythromycin. I just want to point that this paper was published three or four years ago now. So there may be more cases. So please use your clinical judgment in this. And as I mentioned, infection. I found 11 case reports on that. And um, these cases mention that the mechanism of action is not only cytochrome P451A2 inhibition, but also by acting on interleukin-6. So after fluvoxamine, this infection has highest number of cases. So be cautious with these two things, infection, and fluvoxamine among antidepressant. Now moving on, next class is our anti-TB medication, tuberculosis medication. And the two medication with one case each I found was for isoniazid, which increases through inhibition of 1A2. And the interesting thing is, 
the second medication which is rifampin will decrease it through induction of 1A2 and 3A4. We all know that rifampin is well known for induction and reduction in the medication dosages. So be mindful of that. But isoniazid is an inhibitor. So it will increase or likely increase the level of clozapine if prescribed together. Now, next class is our GI medication, proton pump inhibitors and acids. Let's talk about this class, very important class, omeprazole. This was mentioned in our case that we talked before we discussed this. Omeprazole is an inducer of 1A2 and 3A4, so it will decrease the level, not increase it. So in our patient, patient is having clozapine toxicity, so omeprazole is not a cause for that because it will reduce the clozapine level and patient will become more disorganized or have a break of psychosis. So omeprazole will reduce the level. And I just want to say one more thing. Um, so they recommend that you can use S-omeprazole if you want to use that class because S-omeprazole have no cytochrome P450 interaction. So safer option compared to omeprazole. Now, next medication in this is cimetidine. We know that cimetidine is a pan inhibitor uh, of cytochrome P450 system. So it will increase the clozapine levels. So avoid cimetidine and omeprazole in your patients on clozapine if possible. Uh, and um, I also found one case report for aluminum hydroxide, but not very strong case report. So I have not included that here. Now, moving on to next class of oral contraceptives and clozapine interaction. Well, I found this study, two case reports actually, for ethanol estradiol containing oral contraceptive. They increase clozapine level by inducing, sorry, by inhibiting 1A2 and 2C19. And I found two reports on that. So be cautious with this class or type of oral contraceptives. And uh, just for the sake of completion, I will say, I also found some, actually one cases each for medic antihypertensive medications like lisinopril, amiodarone, and also for modafinil, but I have not included them. The cases were only one, and I was not able to find much data on those. So, moving forward to our herbal medication. Well, in the case that we discussed, this patient, uh, we talked about St. John's wort. So, what St. John's wort does is, it decreases clozapine level, not increase. It decreases by induction of 3A4 and also by acting at P glycoprotein. So this is not the answer in our patient also because our patient is having clozapine toxicity. But it, but St. John Wart's, St. John's Wart reduces clozapine level, if anything. So what is the answer then? Well, let's find out. So the other important, I think after fluvoxamine and infection, I think the third most important interaction to know is cigarette smoking. So it's actually not the nicotine in cigarette, but it's the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons in the cigarette, which is responsible for induction of 1A2. So if somebody is smoking cigarettes, they will have reduction in clozapine level. And the opposite is true. If somebody is smoking cigarettes on clozapine, they go to a hospital which is smoke-free. What will happen? They will have increase in clozapine level then. But if a patient has started smoking, they will not have increased clozapine level, but reduction in clozapine level. So in our patient case that we discussed, this will not be an answer. But I just want to say that there is so much data on this. 
um, there are cases that tell you how to manage clozapine dosing. If somebody is smoking extensively and they are admitted to a hospital, so recommendation is to reduce the clozapine dose by 30 or 40 percent on admission over first four or seven days and then increase the dose by 1.5 time over two to four weeks. Very important point. Let me know if you want me to talk more about it. We can make a new um, po video podcast on that also. But very, very important point. The interaction of cigarette smoking and clozapine. Very important. Now the last one is caffeine. Well, this was one of the option in our case also. How does caffeine interact with clozapine? Well, caffeine is a 1A2 inhibitor. So it will increase the dose of it will increase the level of clozapine in your patient. So always monitor for coffee, cola, or other caffeinated beverages intake in your patient on clozapine. Because same rule applies. If somebody stop um, intake of caffeine, it can cause reflex decrease in clozapine level. But caffeine intake increases clozapine level. So caffeine and the cigarettes, they both act on 1A2 but opposite. So this was our podcast for today. As I mentioned, this is available on three areas. First is our website, Psychiatry Education Forum. I will place the link below. Second is our course, Physician's Guide for Clinical Psychiatry course. And uh, I will place a link for our course subscriber. Actually, for our course subscribers, they can also download this table of all the interaction that they can print and use for their clinical purposes moving forward and third this is available on our youtube channel please subscribe to our youtube channel if you have not done already and if you have not subscribed to our physician's guide for clinical psychiatry course here is a link please do that and in the end i will say we are available on various social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And contact me here if you have any questions. I will try, I mostly try to reply within 24 hours. And again, not to repeat the same thing, do join our email newsletter to receive updates of new posts on the website, new videos on our YouTube channel, or any new updates. I will place all these links below. So thank you friends. Thanks again for your time. You all have a good day. Take care. Bye.